Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to our online worship service at Union Congregational Church in Magnolia. However you came to this link, I'm so glad that you've joined us for this next little while of worship. We're going to think and pray together about how God's presence and power goes before us into this new year, and in particular, how the resurrection of Jesus Christ means everything in 2021. I invite you now into some moments of quiet reflection as we gather virtually for worship. a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free, in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. a song in every silence seeking word and melody there's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me from the past will come the future what it holds a mystery unrevealed until it sees in something God alone can see Eternity in our death, a resurrection 
at the last a victory unrevealed until its season something god alone can see Let's pray together. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the Savior reigns let all their songs employ while fields and floods rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow Far as the curse is found Far as the curse is found Far as, far as the curse is found He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, You believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all your people's hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The other day, I had a notification pop up on my phone. I took a screenshot and I wanted to show it to you. It says, you have a new memory. It's from my photos app. Year in review, 2020. And when I saw the words year in review, 2020, I said, no, thank you. I will not review the year 2020. Although, to be fair, there was a picture of Elias in the little thumbnail there celebrating his birthday, and you can see that in greater detail here. Happy birthday, Elias. As difficult as 2020 was, we all still celebrated birthdays in one way or another. And in fact, it is worth thinking back to how God was present with us and the joys and successes and things for which we're thankful in 2020, difficult as it was. We put out a bunch of signs right around Easter that reminded ourselves and our neighbors that we're all in this together. And this other one, don't give up. In our own church, we put up a playground, the Joan Brown Memorial Playground, made possible by a generous gift that Joan left to the church in her passing and the generosity of some others who worked together, the hard work of Farah and a number of other people who helped this come into being. And so that's something worth celebrating in 2020 as well. It's getting lots of use by the play, by the neighborhood kids and and some church kids as well. We started a YouTube channel in 2020. That's worth looking back and remembering fondly. We moved our worship uh, online, and so we had these pre-recorded worship services. We also took to Zoom and learned this technology that already existed, but became more and more a part of our regular lives. And so here's a, a picture of us on a Zoom coffee hour early on in the pandemic when we gathered in the best way that we knew how to, even as we were trying to be safe and and careful with not spreading COVID-19. We met outside for worship at Church in the Cove in Beverly. We did that a number of times this summer. I was especially grateful for the role that Brian Barry Larson has taken in leading us in worship music uh, in a number of creative ways throughout this strange time. We gathered together to pray. 
We got together for Christmas Eve. Thanks to Stephanie for the great photo here. We were able uh, just a little more than a week ago to get together and sing and listen to scripture and remember the coming of Jesus to earth. The pandemic could not keep us from that. And yet, even as I preach right now, you're seeing the pulpit behind me, but I'm looking out on empty pews. We have not been in our sanctuary since mid-March. Lent was the season. We're coming up on another Lent now. We never finished out that Lent together. We didn't get to celebrate Easter together. We've missed a number of milestones gathering in this very sanctuary. And this is the kind of stuff in 2020 that I would just as soon forget, and maybe you would as well. There was this striking installation here, 20,000 chairs put in Washington, D.C., not very far from the White House, each representing 10 deaths due to COVID-19 in the United States. So our death toll is well above 300,000 now, uh, inching closer toward a couple of million worldwide. And of course, this pandemic defined the year, and, and as some have called it, it's a, a generation a defining moment as well. We also became, many of us became more aware of this other pandemic of racism in the United States. The murder of George Floyd set off a number of protests and what some have called a racial reckoning in the United States. This racism in both interpersonal and institutional levels is not new like COVID-19, but in some fresh and hopefully deeper ways as a country, as churches, as communities, as families, as individuals, we've started to think more deeply about this and have wanted to become anti-racist in the name of Jesus, especially those of us who call Jesus Lord. And so 2020 inspired a number of memes, 2020 written by Stephen King, directed by Quentin Tarantino, one star review 2020 wouldn't recommend. And then the Washington Post had this uh, contest or, or this, you could submit your own single word summary of 2020. Mine didn't get in, uh, but there were some great summaries of 2020. And the best summation uh, was more than just one word, but the best summation, I'll put it here on the screen so you can see it. This comes from a nine-year-old in Beverly Hills, Michigan. 2020 is like looking both ways before crossing the street and then getting hit by a submarine because it's been the craziest year ever. And you know, this doesn't even sound all that strange anymore. You might not be surprised to cross the street and find a submarine going across. 2020 has been a difficult year, and when I saw that notification on my phone, year in review, and then countless other year in review articles that often come up at the end of the year, I have mostly wanted to avoid them. But it's been good for me to try to remember the ways in which God has been present to this church community in my own life and my family, here in Magnolia, in the United States, and in the world. So I want to invite you now as we are already in this new year, I want to invite you now to some moments of silent reflection or discussion, if you're with others, to think about prayerfully these two questions. And I'll read them for you and then put them on the screen and give you some time. The first question, where did you see God at work in 2020? Where did you see God at work in 2020? And then what about 2020 would you like to forget or move on from? So take about a minute each for each of these questions.
Well, of course, we hope that 2021 is going to be better than 2020. It's difficult to imagine it being any more challenging. And so you might find this on a, a poster or a t-shirt, 2021 will be a better year. But it may not be. We don't know that for sure. We don't know what the future holds. And so more than just the turning of the calendar into a new year, more than just saying, well, it could always be worse, where do we as followers of Jesus find our hope as the calendar turns to a new year? Richard Hayes was a professor at Duke Divinity School, just recently retired, professor of New Testament and theology. And this is what he says about the resurrection of Jesus. Hayes says, the resurrection of Jesus is the key to understanding the world and therefore the key to all history. Any history that does not begin from the vantage point of the resurrection of Jesus is distorted because it denies or fails to grasp the true history of the world. Any history that does not begin from the vantage point of the resurrection of Jesus is distorted because it denies or fails to grasp the true history of the world. It's a radical claim, but it is what we as Christians believe that our hope is in the resurrection, the most amazing and powerful and miraculous event in all of human history. And if it happened, if it's true, which we believe it is, then it changes everything, even now. And so any history, Hayes says, that does not begin from the vantage point of the resurrection is distorted. We might even take that a step further to say any year that does not begin from the vantage point of the resurrection is going to be distorted. We could go into 2021 with all of our hopes pinned on a new vaccine or a new presidential administration or heightened racial consciousness or anything else that we might be hoping for. And we could see good out of all of those things, but we don't know what this year is going to hold. And, and those are all circumstantial reasons for hope anyway. The resurrection of Jesus is the source of our hope as we move from 2020 to 2021. I want to go back to our scripture reading from 1 Peter today, which expresses much the same sentiment. Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our new birth as Christians comes not just in a new year, although there certainly are reasons to hope things will improve in 2021. But our hope comes from a new birth given to us through, Peter says, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the source, the ground of our hope, that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead into new life and has brought us with him from death into life. And so Peter can say to a group of beleaguered Christians, and you may remember that at the beginning of the pandemic, we worked our way through First Peter. Peter can say, in this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. Does not that first resonate with you right now, my friends? Peter says, in this, namely in this new birth into a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. Trials notwithstanding, even if they continue into 2021, which they will, you have new birth, you have living hope, and it's through the resurrection of Jesus. And because of this, 
we can rejoice, just like the folks that Peter wrote to. So hope is not just a, a fuzzy feeling, or as I preach this summer, hope is not just optimism, and it's certainly not circumstantial. Christian hope is rooted in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which makes all things new, and someday will make all things totally perfect. And so we're part of that journey right now of God renewing and restoring all things. The theologian Willie James Jennings says, hope is a discipline. It is not a sentiment. Hope is a discipline. It's not a sentiment. It's a, it's a verb. It's something that we do. It's not just a feeling that we have. It's like love. We may or may not feel loving, but we can practice love and show love to other people. We may or may not feel hopeful, and the circumstances may shout against the idea of hope. And yet, as a discipline, we can practice hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so Hebrews can say, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. We can hold fast to our hope as a discipline, not just because we think it's a good thing to do, or, or not just because of all of the studies that show us that gratitude makes our lives better, that's true, but we can hold fast to hope as a discipline not a sentiment, because he who promised is faithful. And he who promised, promised that death would not get the last word. And in Jesus Christ, it did not. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead into new life, bringing us with him from death into life. And so N.T. Wright talks about what this looks like now in our practical day-to-day -day lives. How does this lofty concept of the resurrection relate to us? How do we participate in this new resurrection life and bring that with us wherever we go and share that hope with others? This is what Wright says in his book, Surprised by Hope. He says, but what we can and must do in the present if we are obedient to the gospel, if we are following Jesus, and if we are indwelt, energized, and directed by the Spirit, what we can and must do is to build for the kingdom. He says, you are, strange though it may seem, almost as hard to believe as the resurrection itself, you are accomplishing something that will become in due course part of God's new world. And he goes on, he says, every act of love, gratitude, and kindness, every work of art or music inspired by the love of God and delight in the beauty of his creation, every minute spent teaching a severely handicapped child to read or to walk, every act of care and nature, of comfort and support for one's fellow human beings, and for that matter, one's fellow non-human creatures, and of course, every prayer, all spirit-led teaching, every deed that spreads the gospel, builds up the church, embraces and embodies holiness rather than corruption, and honors the name of Jesus in all the world. All of this, he says, all of this, every of these acts, every one of them will find its way through the resurrecting power of God into the new creation that God will one day make. I so appreciate these lines from N.T. Wright because they capture how the resurrection of Jesus manifests in everyday life. It's through love and, and gratitude and kindness. It's through art and music and teaching and helping and comforting and supporting. We think of our frontline workers who are giving so much and in that way practicing these acts of resurrection, these acts of new life and bringing hope wherever they go. We think of the ways that Christians and churches throughout the world have been salt and light in this difficult time and so have brought the hope of the resurrection wherever they go. N.T. Wright captures well what that looks like in our day-to-day -day lives. And I had a powerful experience of this on New Year's Eve. Well, it didn't start out as a powerful experience. It started out as a frustrating experience. I spent my New Year's Eve in the most 2020 way possible, which was waiting in a long line. I was at Anmal Restaurant in Beverly. It did not look like this picture. After I had been told on the phone that my food would be ready in an hour and a half, 
I got to Anmal only to see a long line of people stretching outside of the restaurant. And of course, I asked, as did a bunch of other people after me, after I'd been in line for a while, I asked the people in line, are you just now ordering or, or did you already order and you're just here to, to pick up? Of course, hoping that I might just go to the front of the line because I'd already ordered. Well, no, everybody had already ordered and the food just wasn't ready and we were waiting in line for a long time. It actually ended up, uh, we made the best of it. There, there were some new friendships formed and I saw a couple people I knew and people were making jokes about this new community that was forming and what a 2020 experience this was. One person said, we're going to have the vaccine by the time we get our food. What really touched me though was after about an hour of waiting, a half hour outside and half hour inside and trying to be patient, but you know, being frustrated as my, family back home is waiting for food. What really touched me was this act of kindness that I saw, this 20-something-year-old man who paid for the woman behind him for her whole meal, which I think was a meal for a family, because he learned that she was an ICU nurse at Mass General. And his act of compassion just reverberated throughout the restaurant. He was trying to do it quietly, but we all noticed. And I said to him that that was really cool of him and let him know that that inspired me and just the hope in humanity that that kind of thing restores, especially after you've been waiting for an hour. But this guy had practiced, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but he had practiced the resurrection, this new life, this gratitude, this hope, this generosity that we have through Jesus by buying a meal for someone to express gratitude. These are the kinds of acts of resurrection that Jesus empowers us to do, to bring new life wherever we go, to bring hope and generosity and healing wherever we go. I want to encourage you now in closing to spend some more time reflecting for yourself. Two more questions to think about, and I'll read them out loud and they'll be on the screen. In what ways could the power of Christ's resurrection shape your 2021. In what ways could the power of Christ's resurrection shape your 2021? And then how can you join God this year practically? How can you join God this year in restoring all things and all people to God? As we express our unity by gathering at the Lord's table, we proclaim his death and look forward to his coming again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. The bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. And so we pray, Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night he was betrayed and suffered, instituted the ordinance of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in giving himself for us gives us a pledge of eternal life to be appropriated by faith and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Praying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in the assurance of our eternal life with you. Amen. Let us pray now in the words our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Jesus Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. I invite you now to receive the bread, the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ, broken for us, the bread of heaven. Take a moment now to receive. This is the blood of Christ shed for us, the cup of the new covenant. Now take a moment to receive. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love you and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And friends, know that because of the sacrifice of Christ in giving his body and blood for us, we are counted as being totally free before the presence of the most holy God. Thanks be to God. You be Latte day, oh, you be Latte day, oh, Alleluia. You be Latte day, oh, you be Latte day, oh, Alleluia. 
now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you his peace. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace.